Hello and welcome to this episode of the Life Illuminated Podcast. I'm Maggie Kelly and I'm your host. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about boundaries. And by boundaries, I mean the ability to say what we want to say or say what we need to say or do what we need to do to take care of ourselves in a way that, um, I, I guess, compassionate boundaries, right? So that we can take care of the other person as well, but more importantly, take care of ourselves. And, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because it seems like in the last few weeks that I've been um, challenged to really look at my own boundaries in certain situations. And um, one particular episode was with a friend. We're not really close friends, but we're friends and we have friends in common. And she had asked several weeks ago if her husband could stay here for a week in my beautiful little cottage in the orchard uh, while she and her two children went ahead on to the vacation that they that they were all going to have and he would ultimately join them a week later and i said well sure and she paid me and that was the plan and i fully um, anticipated them or him showing up and I get a phone call about an hour before he was to show up from her. And I said, where are you? Because my understanding was this was a road trip that she and her kids were going to go on and her husband would be joining her. And she said, oh, well, we've had a little bit of a change of plans and we've decided that we're going to stay in town with um, my husband and then we're all going to go on our vacation together. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I fully intended her to say next that she needed to stay somewhere else because it was going to be the four of them. And my place literally fits two people and not any more than that. Um, but instead, what she said was, I'm sure you don't mind that all four of us are going to come and stay with you for the week. Like it was a done deal that, you know, it wasn't even a question. And of course, the mere fact that she called an hour before he was supposed to be here on his own to let me know all four of them were coming was enough for me to understand that this was not something I was going to have a choice in, at least as far as she was concerned. And what's interesting was that inside of the conversation, I actually heard myself and stopped myself. And thought ahead for a very, very first time probably inside of a conversation when somebody wanted something from me that I honestly felt didn't work for me. I actually said, you know what? This doesn't work for me. I run a business from my home. The little guest house doesn't, doesn't serve four people. Um, my clients are coming and going from my uh, meditation community all day long. The dogs are in and out all day long to accommodate the clients and it won't serve me or my business to have four of you coming and going as well and me having to worry about the dogs and my clients and everything else. And what I heard myself say was no in a very compassionate way. And that I understood in the moment that this wasn't going to work for me. And you know what? In the past, I would have said yes, just to appease her or just so that it would have kept the peace because that's who I am. Like, let's keep the peace at all costs, even if it means it doesn't work for me or it, it isn't a good thing for me. I'll just do it anyway, just to not make waves. And what I noticed this time was that I was able to say what there was for me to say in the moment. And it's interesting because I think it caught her off guard. I think that she truly and honestly thought that I was going to say, oh, okay, fine, come on over without batting an eye. And when I said, no, um, this isn't going to work for me, she proceeded to try and change my mind. and honestly manipulate me into saying yes. 
but I didn't fall for it, which is so new for me. So what I mean by boundaries is not, not saying no, like no way, and it can't happen that way, but being mindful to take care of that other person in the process of holding firm with what's important to you. And I think in the past, I was not very strong at this particular thing because I had an underlying conversation inside of myself that said on an ongoing basis, you need to keep the peace. You need to keep the relationship going. They're going to say something. If you say no, um, you know, they're not going to like you if you say no, um, just accommodate their request and make it happen and be nice. And, you know, all of those conversations are, were underneath for me all the time. And I think I lived from a place of certainly people pleasing, you know, and if I look in my life and I look at my past relationships in even my romantic relationships, my relationships with my kids, my relationships with some clients, um, I see a pattern of my behavior from the past that was very much run by old conversations or inherited conversations that I need to do it your way, my way doesn't matter, or that I'm not good enough, or I don't deserve, or I'm not important, and, or what I have to say isn't important. And what I noticed in this particular episode that I'm um, describing to you is a completely different person came to this particular conversation. And I was able to nicely but firmly say, that won't work for me for you to show up here with your family of four and stay at my house for a week. It just, that was not the plan. That was not my intention. That was not what I was told was going to happen. And as flexible as I'd like to be, it won't work me, for me to do it any other way than we originally agreed to have it work. And hopefully I left that relationship intact. I don't know, but, but that's the other piece. I did, stand up for myself. I did not bend, but I also was not unkind. I was compassionate and loving and hopefully left the relationship intact and her um, having been taken care of at least in that regard. And, and the other thing I noticed about that particular incident is that in the middle of her continuing to push me and trying to change, help have me change my mind, what I stopped and said to her was, you know, it isn't really fair of you to call me an hour before your husband is supposed to show up for an agreed upon stay at my house and tell me that your entire family is coming to stay an hour before. And that stopped her dead in her tracks. I mean, it was just like utter silence on the other end. But it was a way for me to say no, and what you just did is not appropriate without actually saying that, right? So where did that come from? I don't know. All I know is that I've worked really hard in the last few years, probably five or 10 years now, on where some old conversations come from that have me thinking that I don't deserve better have me saying yes when I really don't want to say yes, and then ultimately feeling victimized or um, taken advantage of and then being angry about it and finding out why it is that I do that because there's no reason, like I'm always the one that doesn't want any conflict. I don't want to create conflict. I want it all to be peace and, and nice. But just because I, I feel like I want my relationships to be calm and settled and nice doesn't mean that I can't say no when I need to take care of me. This episode, this, this incident was a complete example of me finally knowing how to take care of me for a change without hurting someone else, hopefully not. Um, and truly in, in the big picture of this actual incident, 
it's really not my issue to worry about where she is going to have her family stay. Um, because the deal was not her family to stay here. The deal was her husband to stay here. So, you know, part of what I noticed too in exploring these issues for myself in my own life was to start to get a sense of we invite in the relationships we need in the moment to teach us something, I think. I, I think um, it was Dr. Phil at one point who said, you know, we teach people how to treat us. And I think we do. I think that's really a, an amazingly strong statement because when we allow others to take advantage of us, manipulate us, convince us to do certain things that we really don't feel like doing, loan them money we don't have, uh, babysit when we don't have the time to do so, uh, make appointments with us when our calendar's already full. And we allow that, we're basically saying, go ahead and take advantage of me because it doesn't matter to me because I don't matter to me. I think in some sense that is truly what we're saying of ourselves to another. And then the other person does get the in the sense that it's okay. She's going to say yes. So I'm going to go ahead and just plan it and, and show up because, you know, she's going to say yes. So what's really neat is that I think for me, I noticed in the moment that this is what was going on and I didn't allow it myself to be manipulated. And I didn't just say yes, because I tried to keep the peace. I said no, because it didn't work for me. And even if I tried to compromise somehow, it still wasn't going to work for me in, in the picture that I have in my own life, in my own house right now. So I think it's really, really interesting to also be aware enough to notice because I honestly believe that the years that I have spent in mindfulness and meditation have given me a different perspective than I had when I was really, really revved up and stressed out and really reactionary. That I, I, when I was revved up and reactionary and always on high alert, I was not a very happy person and I was always stressed out. And when we're stressed out like that, on an ongoing basis, living in this state of fight and flight where we kind of almost live out of survival. When we're living like that, it's very, very difficult to, to find choice in our lives. We just kind of react as opposed to pause and respond. And I truly believe that my experience and years of meditating and inserting mindfulness practices into my day has created a shift in me that has me stop and pause and really notice, kind of noticing what people are saying in what they're not really saying. To be able to see and feel and experience and be more intuitively tuned in to people than I have been in the past. And I think that that's super, super important too, because it's way, way, way too easy to say yes to somebody, do what it is that they asked you to do that you know full well you really didn't want to do, didn't have time to do, weren't committed to doing, and then turn around and blame them. Because I did that for years and years and years. It was always somebody else's fault. Um, that things didn't work out the way I wanted to, or that I was exhausted. I always felt victimized. But when I actually started to look at my own behavior, I victimized myself because I'm the one who said yes. And then I did the thing that I said yes to that I actually, in the underneath, never wanted to say yes to to begin with. And then I felt victimized and defensive. And it's really hard to have relationships from that place, right? The other thing that I really spent some time doing over the past five or so years is um, 
working a little bit of um, the work that Melody Beatty does. Um, it's about codependency. And one of the books that she has written beyond co codependency has a lot of really wonderful exercises and activities in the back of each chapter that have you actually start to look at your behaviors, your codependent behaviors or your behaviors that have you say yes and not set boundaries when you know you wish you could and try to ascertain why it is you do that and where it is that it comes from where you think you need to say yes to be okay. Because I think for me it was, I don't want to say no because I don't want them to get angry and I don't want to rock the boat. But it was more than that. <clears throat> I found through doing some of the work that I did is that I inherited a bunch of conversations from different members of my family where I ultimately decided that it doesn't matter what I have to say, that what I have to say is not important. Um, it doesn't matter what I do. No one really cares. Um, those kinds of conversations, which minimized who I am, for myself. And when I came to a relationship with that kind of thinking, it's no wonder that into my life I attracted people who felt that way about me as well. Like, you're not important. It's not important. What you have to say isn't important. You're not good enough or you don't measure up. All of us come to the world, I think, not to the world, but to certain relationships with past relationships inside of us. And I think that we attract the person into our lives who is simply a mirror of how we feel about ourselves. And in that moment, if we can have the awareness to actually notice that that relationship is either really, really healthy and so fantastic and I'm being taken care of and they're treating me with dignity and respect that I deserve and that this is a beautiful thing or we notice that I'm not comfortable, I don't feel good in this relationship, I don't feel nurtured and taken care of, I don't feel on equal footing, I don't feel loved, I don't feel like I'm enough for this person. If we can stop in the relationship and actually look at it, just be aware and awake enough to notice one way or the other which way that relationship is going. And I'm talking about all relationships because I have relationships with my kids and sometimes, you know, obviously as a parent, you're having to say no. And then they throw their little um, temper tantrum or hissy fit or whatever and in that moment, that's the moment to ask, can I compromise with what I say I need or want right now? Or is this something that is a boundary that I won't let be eroded and this is the way it's going to be and hold my ground and stand my ground and continue to hold a boundary that's firm and loving. And so that's the other piece, right? I don't wanna set boundaries that have me feeling like I've hurt the other person or left the other person in the lurch or you know, was uncompromising or unbending. So to be able to have compassionate boundaries, I think is, is the thing that I really strive for. A boundary that says, I care about myself, I care about what I need, I care about what um, is important to me, and where I am in this moment, but I also care about you and how important this might be to you. And can I, can I put a little gray area on this boundary of my own to help accommodate you? Or is this one of those boundaries where there just honestly isn't, isn't a gray area that makes sense? So I think it's super important too to take a look at some of the conversations that you might have inherited in your life from other family members. Like if you stop for a moment, just close your eyes and just start to think about some of the conversations that keep coming up and resonating with you 
are they repetitive conversations that resonate with you? Like, is this the same thought you've had over and over and over again? Like I'm not good enough or I'll never fit or um, I'll never measure up or I should just be quiet. Are those just um, conversations that come up again and again for you or are and, and if they are, that would be the time where I would ask myself, where did I get this conversation? What is the story attached to this conversation that has me believing this conversation? Because it's a dangerous place to be inside of your head, believing your own thinking, unless you check it out with someone else or unless you are able to acknowledge it with somebody else and, and, Try to figure out whether or not you just made that up or if it's really, really true. So when you're having doubts, self-doubts, critical thoughts of yourself, judgmental thoughts, stop for a moment, insert the pause and ask yourself, is this true? Is this really the case or did I make this up? So that's, you know, those are some of the tips that I have for today and you know, the, the incident with my friend, I honestly got off the phone and I was like, good job. You did a good job with that. Hopefully I didn't leave her angry. I'm sure she was upset that she didn't get what she wanted, but that's not on me. What's on me is to be responsible for taking care of me and for saying no when I mean no and for saying no in a kind enough way that also takes care of the relationship and the other person. It doesn't leave somebody feeling bad about themselves for having asked. So, and being able to recognize if there's a little bit of give that you can have with the other person and then giving to them a little piece of your boundary is okay too. So, you know, I believe firmly that in the work that I've done for myself in the last few years, this, this particular work has been the most impactful and powerful because what I notice is I notice that I am important now. I do feel important and that I am good enough and that I can say no and that the world is not going to come to an end if I say no. And if other people aren't happy with my boundaries, you know, I can't do much about how other people feel. I can only do what I can do to take care of me, not in a selfish way, but in a, um, a way that nurtures me. And in nurturing me, then I feel better about myself all the time. And then I, I can express myself more clearly also. So just give it a shot. You know, when you, when you feel like somebody wants something from you or is asking you to do something that you really would rather not, stop yourself and ask yourself, can I say no? And if I say no, will it be okay? Will I be okay? Because I can guarantee you, you'll be okay if you say no, right? There's that saying that says, um, no is a complete sentence. And it is, you know, I was just having that conversation with my daughter too the other day. It's like, it's okay to say no. It's really okay to just say no and you don't have to explain yourself. You really don't. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Life Illuminated podcast. I'm Maggie Kelly, your host. And if you'd love to get a hold of me, you can do so by visiting my website at www.satsanghouse.net. That's www.satsanghouse.net. Or... Um, feel free to download this episode and uh, rate it and review it and subscribe so that you're um, notified every Thursday when we um, publish another episode of the Life Illuminated podcast. And until then, here's to living a life illuminated. Take care and have a beautiful week.